What's up guys, Agent here again with another Build Basics video and today we're going to be going over weaving. Uh, so weaving is basically one of the most important things you're going to have to master as a DPS um, in order to be able to pull very good DPS. Uh, so in this video we'll be explaining uh, basically what light weaving is, what heavy weaving is, kind of give a demonstration of both. And then finally we'll be talking a little bit about animation cancelling. Now animation cancelling is technically weaving as well. They're, they're basically think of weaving as a form of animation cancelling. Uh, however, when most people say animation cancelling, we're talking more about um, things like block cancelling or bar swap cancelling certain abilities. So I'll give you guys a little bit of a demonstration on that. As well, explain uh, when you should be using uh, animation cancelling versus just simple weaving. So, weaving is basically the idea of putting a light attack between your abilities, or conversely, you can think of it as putting an ability between your light attacks. Um, so, so, some people like to think of it different ways. Um, so, some people like to think of it as putting an ability after a, a light attack, or uh, which is usually the more common way of thinking about weaving. And then other people like to think of it as uh, putting in a light attack between each ability, which is a little bit less common. Um, so, uh, just to kind of give you an idea of what weaving looks like. Um, I am, uh, if you guys don't know, I do have a little bit of connection issues here and there, uh, so my weaving is not necessarily going to be perfect and right spot on. So basically, uh, every single light attack has an attack animation associated with it. So with dual wields, you can see here, that's kind of the light attack animation. So if we just hit the button once, you know, that, that's the whole animation, the complete animation. However, if we use an ability before that animation is done, so for example, we're going to be using, um, let's just say, Engulfing Flames right now, you actually don't go through the entire light attack animation. So, for reference, that's an entire light attack animation with the main hand, that's with the off hand. So you can see here that we did go through the light attack animation, the first maybe a third of it and then we would immediately went into our ability. So light attack weaving is basically uh, more or less canceling out your light attack animation uh, with an ability animation instead. So if we were to do this on a dummy here, this is what it would look like. Uh, so if we were not weaving properly, uh, so what we're going to be using, uh, let's say, Venomous Claws now. So that's what a good weave looks like, right? So if we weren't, if we were weaving too slowly, this is what it would look like. You would actually, so you can kind of see that the animation is kind of going fully through, versus when you're weaving very nicely, you don't really see that tail end of the animation there. Um, so that's basically what light attack weaving is, and the timing is going to be a little bit different depending on the weapon you're using. So. So weaving on a bow bar, for instance, is going to be very different from weaving on your dual wield bar. And uh, light weaving on a staff is going to be even more different than um, light weaving using a melee weapon or a bow. So you kind of have, kind of have to uh, figure out the timing on that. So once we get out of combat, I'll swap over to a staff so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, man. Alright, so for this, um, I'll be light weaving, uh, let's just say, other relenting grip with a staff. So for a staff, so this is more for magical DPS, that's the full light attack animation there. So you can see you actually throw your, your staff forward, shoot your little projectile, and then bring it back. So that's a pretty long animation. However, uh, just like with light attack weaving with melee weapons and a bow, you can completely cancel out of the drawback animation. Uh, this is not a very good example because uh, Unrelenting Grip kind of has a very robust animation, I guess. So with Inner Fire, you can see that that's basically like if you're weaving directly on a point there. Get my magic back. So if I was weaving a little bit too slowly on the staff, you can see your you can already see that the the staff is kind of being drawn back already, and that's when you know you're being a little bit too slow on the light weave. Um, so sword and boards, pretty much, you can just treat it as the same as dual wield. So the idea is you don't want to see that kind of withdraw animation or the follow through animation with um, while you're light weaving. So once you get out of combat, I'll swap back to the bow bar. You guys can see what the bow bar full light attack animation is. 
So you can see here the full light attack animation for the bow actually involves drawing another arrow out of your quiver and knocking it. So you shouldn't have to, so if you're light weaving appropriately, you shouldn't see your character reach behind them for that additional bow uh, arrow and knock it in. So if you're going too slowly, you'll start seeing that, um, you'll see the character reach and potentially even knock that arrow. So that's what, uh, that's when you're, you know you're being too slow with your light attacks. Now, so that's light attack weaving, so that's really important to master, um, because, especially for magic DPS, it's less so for stamina DPS. Stamina DPS will typically do more heavy attack weaving, although you will be light weaving on your bow bar. Uh, so it's important to master light weaving on your back bar. So, for instance, your just typical stamina decay rotation, or I guess really any stamina DPS rotation is going to involve doing endless hail, caltrops, and then a bar swap cancelling out of poison injection, which I'll go over in a little bit. But on your front bar for stamina DPS, you'll be doing, sometimes depending on the class, you'll be doing heavy attack weaving. Uh, so stam stamina night blades, for instance, won't be doing too many um, light weaves, uh, heavy weaves, I should say. But DKs, stam sorks, uh, stamina wardens sometimes will also uh, be doing a lot of heavy attack weaving. So heavy attack weaving is pretty much the same idea as light attack weaving. Except instead of cancelling out of the light attack anima animation, you're cancelling out of the heavy attack animation. So this is a full heavy attack animation, so you can see we still have that follow through. So if you want to light weave, or heavy weave I should say, uh, a neat trick that some people aren't necessarily aware of is the idea of um, basically what we like to call queuing up an ability. So what you're going to do basically is as you're charging your heavy attack, you will just hit your ability. So it goes off right after your heavy attack hits, so... So that's what it looks like when you heavy attack weave. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just holding my heavy attack button and I'm pressing the, the ability that I want to use next right afterwards. So you can see I'm just, as soon as my light heavy attack hits, I go straight into that ability. And that, so that's basically what heavy weaving is basically like. You're basically queuing up your ability while you're doing that heavy attack animation. So that way, right when your heavy attack hits, you're able to throw that ability off right away and cancel out of the animation entirely for the heavy attack with that really long follow-through animation. So for example, if you're on a stam DK, uh, you know, you'd know you be light weaving on your back bar. Then you'd basically be heavy attacking on your front bar like so. So that's pretty much light weaving and heavy weaving, um, and the heavy weave is the exact same kind of concept for magic DPS too. Uh, as you're charging up your attack on your staff, you basically just want to hit the ability that you're going to want to use next. So for example, if you're uh, you know, heavy attacking into a blockade, you just hit your blockade as you're charging your heavy attack, and as soon as your heavy attack goes off, you will use that blockade right away. Now. I mentioned earlier, for stamina DPS, you're going to want to do what's called bar swap cancel out of your poison injection. And so basically what that means is basically uh, you use a bar swap instead of an ability to cancel out of an ability this time. So, for example... So this is the full poison injection animation. So again, you see that your character is drawing another arrow from the bow and knocking it and everything like that. So if you were to bar swap cancel... You can see that you still heard the poison injection hit, but you didn't actually see the animation entirely. So that's what we call a bar swap cancel. Now, bar swap canceling is pretty common in stamina DPS for the poison injection. That's typically the last ability you use on your back bar. For magic DPS, you'll typically be bar canceling out of the last skill you use on your uh, back bar. And it's going to be different for each... Uh, Class. So, for example, Night Blades will be bar swap cancelling out of Cripple. Um, Magadruka Sorcerers will typically be bar swap cancelling either out of Haunting Curse or Block A, depending on your specific bar setup. Um, so, that's basically bar swap cancelling. Block cancelling is the exact same thing, except instead of bar swapping, you're going to be uh, cancelling using a block instead. So, again, this is the, the full animation for a poison injection. So, if you were to block cancel poison injection, you basically saw that my the shield for blocking shows up really sh briefly there, and you didn't 
actually go through the entire animation. So you basically cancel that animation with the blocking animation instead. That's bar swap, uh, block cancelling. You won't really be see this being used too much in PvE, um, just because blocking and light attacks share the same uh, global cooldown. So the global cooldown is one second, so you can only use an ability every one second. So one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi. So you can see I'm only able to cast an ability once every one second. So that's what we call the global cooldown. Now blocking is also on a cooldown as well. It's on a global cooldown. So if you were to, so if we were to basically block cancel, you can see that uh, you're not going to be able to use your abilities any faster. So in that instance, it's a lot better to just use uh, light attacks instead. It's also very important for Magicka DPS because if you're using a Maelstrom. Uh, back bar, your light attacks gain additional damage uh, due to that Maelstrom enchant. Um, so you won't really be seeing block cancelling used too much in PvE. Um, it is more often used in uh, PvP, uh, but like I said, PvE we don't really use that. We pretty much either, either exclusively light weaving or and bar swap cancelling. So in terms of practicing how to light weave, what I recommend a lot of people do is use a single ability, just one ability, and start off light weaving with that ability. So for instance, uh, on a stem DK for instance, I would recommend starting off with Venomous Claws because that's typically going to be the first um, ability in your rotation. If you're going to be doing bow, you're going to want to try using something like Caltrops. It's a little bit more difficult on stamina DPS, especially on the stam DK, because stam DKs don't light weave on their front bar. But a good way to practice, like I said, is just one ability at a time. So if we're doing Venomous Claws. So you just basically do one ability at a time until you kind of got that sensation down, until you get that down, kind of down to muscle memory. On your bow bar, it'd be something like Endless Hail. Like I said, bow bar is a little bit more difficult because uh, the animations for bows are a little bit weird. Um, it's a lot easier actually to show you on a magic. So it's just get out of combat here and swap to a staff back bar. So you can see here, it's easier to kind of practice using. I'm using block eight here as an example. Uh, so you just practice until you kind of get that rotation down. So you'll know that you have it down when you actually see the projectile shoot out of your staff for Magic DPS. For bows, you can count up the amount of Hawkeyes that you're getting, so you should be sitting at max Hawkeye. Um, and for stamina DPS, for the dual wield bar, you, you can there's a visible um, clink when you hit the enemy with your light attack. So you can so you can kind of hear. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it over the music. Uh, let me just uh, mute the music real quick. So if you can hear that clinking noise, that's how you know that the uh, your light attack has hit. If you don't hear that noise and you see your ability go off, that means you missed the light weave on your dual wield bar. And then for bows, like, like I said, you can just count up the Hawkeye stacks that you get. You should be getting full Hawkeye stacks. And then with the staff, if you're not seeing... Let me see if I can do it. So you can see here that you see the projectile go off for every single block 8 that I'm doing. Now, if I were going too fast, it's really hard for me to actually go too fast because I'm so accustomed to the uh, the speed now. Um, but if you're going too fast, you actually will won't see the projectile shoot out of your staff, and that's how you know you're you're clicking the la left mouse button a little bit too fast. If you see the animation, if you see your staff being drawn backwards, that's how you know you're too slow. So there should be very, very little movement from when you see that projectile go off and when you have the ability go. And then once you manage that timing down on one ability, you stack on the next ability. For, so for example, for Sorks, uh, you would do, you know, light attack, um, light attack, uh, liquid lightning, light attack, liquid lightning, and you practice that until you got that timing down. And once you do that, you start doing light attack, liquid lightning, light attack, block aid. And you practice that until you're able to weave 
uh, between your liquid lightning and your block aid perfectly let's say 10 times then 20 times then 30 times and once you get that down then you can start doing you know continuing to add one skill after the next until you have your full rotation down so for stand decays you know it's it's really easy for stand decays because your front bar rotation is really really simple but you know one way you can tell if you're weaving correctly on your back bar on any stamina class is to take the number of abilities that you have to cast on your back bar so here on a stand decay you see uh, if I was using Flames of Oblivion I would have five abilities to cast every other time So one way to know if you're light weaving appropriately on your back bar is to look at your Hawkeye stacks after a parse and basically look at how what your max Hawkeye stacks are. So for me, I should be seeing four Hawkeye stacks. I have one and this hail, one Caltrops, one uh, Molten, one Poison Injection. Now sometimes I'll have five because I'm also going to light weave my... Uh, uh, my standard or if I'm using Flames of Oblivion I'll be using Flames of Oblivion uh, so basically the number of abilities that you're using on your back bar should be the max number of stacks on Hawkeye so if we take a look at our Hawkeyes you can see I have uh, three so I sh so that means I'm hitting the first one the second one the third one but I'm missing one of my um, one of my bow attacks um, so that means I missed a light weave on my back bar there because I don't have the fourth Hawkeye stack here. So it should be Hawkeye, Hawkeye times two, Hawkeye times three, and then I should see Hawkeye times four. But I don't see that there, so that means I missed a light attack somewhere on my back bar. Uh, so that's pretty much it for weaving, uh, how what it is, the different forms of animation cancelling, block cancelling, and bar swap cancelling, as well as how you can practice your weaving ability. It's going to be very important for you to do to master light weaving as a magic DPS and as certain stamina DPS as well, particularly stamina night blades. Uh, those guys pretty much light weave everything on their front bar except maybe do one or two heavy attacks on on the in order to sustain, depending on your race. Um, so hopefully you guys will have a better idea of how to practice and how to master weaving and animation canceling. Hope you guys found this video informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.